Okay, so I've gotten, um, I did the loop stitch again, and you see it falls nicely over the other hairs here. You have that little bit of gap. Um, it's only in the middle, but that's okay, because when we go up a little bit further, um, it'll completely cover the head. So, we're at our six stitches. Slide, bring forward. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> bring forward, then slide, bring back, turn your work. Slide again, bring your yarn to the back. Okay, now you just knit across normally um, to the last six stitches once again. <clears throat> One, two, three. Do that again. Slide, turn. Okay, this time we're actually going to go up. So we're going to go to the last two stitches. And you can uh, change this to however many stitches you want to go to. It really depends on your preference. But you see, you can kind of see how, or I hope you can see, I should have done this in a lighter color yarn. Um, it kind of is giving a bulge here to where um, it gives a little pocket. And you could have done loop stitch on this row too. Anyways, I'm uh, going to last two stitches. You could go to the last four stitches and do it again and bring it up. It just really depends, like I said, on your preference. Okay. Um, go to the last two stitches here, and then on the next one, you're going to go all the way to the end. So, all the way to the last two stitches again. Yarn forward, slide, yarn back, turn, slide, yarn back. Um, you could again do the loop stitch right here so that you have hair falling over that, not just for time's sake. I'm going to knit all the way to the end. Like I said, you could do loop stitch here. Don't have to. And to be honest, I do something different with my wig almost every time. You could also um, do a couple of different colors. You could either change your yarn, say you want it to be, you know, two different shades of brown. You could either change your yarn, you know, every other row to this, to where you have a row of brown, then a row of tan. Or you could do, I guess, uh, this is called fair isle knitting. I'm not really sure if that's the proper term, where you switch back and forth, where you would knit too dark brown, too light brown, too dark brown, too light brown. I would think that would be a little bit more complicated, though. It would be really pretty when it's done. Um, I would really suggest alternating rows if you're going to do that. Or you could go back later and root different color highlight in your hair. Um, like you do on the rooted method. Just stab under these stitches and add your highlight color if you want to do it that way. Um, that would probably actually be the easiest way to do it. Anyways, you see how this kind of curves a little bit and um, creates a little pocket so it sits a little bit better on the head, whereas if you just did flat, it would be kind of funky. But anyways, it sits kind of on the head real well. I know it's kind of hard to see, uh, especially since she already has hair. Um, so th that's going to be for this part of the skull, the rounded part of the skull. And then you're going to kind of just keep going the normal way until you get around here. 
And then you want to start your decreases on each side. Um, you can do this during your loop rows. I would suggest doing it through the opposite row, the wrong side row. And you just kind of want to get it to where it decreases to form a little peak right here, to where it forms your hairline. Um, you don't have to do it this way. I think it looks really well. Anyways, once you are done with your piece and it's off the needle, you just fit it on your head. I'll show you on um, my other, my larger doll, because he actually doesn't have his hair down yet. Um, take off his little... This is called a fringe piece I was showing you earlier. It's just a couple of rows. It's just, I think, um, two or three rows of the loop method. And this is for bangs. If you want to have side bangs or you just want a piece in the front where you can't see this part, um, that's what the fringe piece is for. I highly suggest a fringe piece just because it really does um, look really good uh, to cover up the other pieces. Um, see how I kind of formed his to his head and then I pinned it down. Sometimes you might have to wrinkle a little bit to kind of get it to fit how you want it. Um, anyways, I pin him down all the way around. And then you just take a piece of yarn and you just sew it into the head. You can use a whip stitch. You can use... Um, a mattress stitch. You can use whatever kind of stitch you want. It's not really going to show, so it doesn't matter too much. I also try to put a couple of, take a piece of yarn and do a couple stitches throughout the back of the head, just so it sits a little bit easier. It um, doesn't move around, and it's not going to come off as easy. So, anyways, that's the best way to use, I would suggest, if you're doing it for a young child, or um, in this case, I'm making this tutorial for the traveling dolls, which are going to be traveling all across the world for about a year. So the hair is probably going to get messed up in the meantime. Um, <clears throat> another thing I suggest for if you're going to do the rooted method or really any method, if the hair is going to be cut instead of looped around, I highly suggest, which I don't see it on my workspace here, um, putting a drop of fray check on the very tips of it. This will keep it from unraveling because it, especially if it's going to be played with with a small child, they're going to play with it really roughly. So the hair is going to eventually start to split and you really don't want that because then it starts to get frizzy and it's not as pretty and well, you get my point. Anyways, um, another method that I mentioned a little bit earlier that works really well is what I did with this doll here, which is bake it. And you can bake it flat. You don't have to bake it around dowel rods like I did with this one to make the curls, though it looks really pretty. Um, with hers, I had really, really thick, I think it was homespun yarn, which is mostly acrylic. I think it's part wool and mostly acrylic. Um, anyways, it different um, thicknesses of hair. This one I think I baked for 35 minutes. Whereas this one here, I only baked for 15 because it was a lot smaller yarn. It was a lot tighter. And then, um, anyways, the baking, it keeps it from unraveling at the end. It's not going to split. You're not going to have split ends. And it's going to hold up a lot longer. Um, this stuff right here is really soft, delicate yarn. But by baking it, it's really pretty tough, as you can see here. So baking, it's a good idea. I... Like I said, I usually do take the dowel rods, which I'll grab one and show you. Here's my broken dowel rod. Um, I typically unravel my hair to make it thinner. It really is a preference. Um, it doesn't matter what you do. But anyways, I soak. I usually run water or soak the dowel rods into water. This helps to keep the yarn from burning. Then you dip the yarn into the water, which makes it stick to the dowel rod. Then you just kind of twirl it around. However tight you want your curls, you can do it real thin, you can do it real loose. Anyways, you uh, 